Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zeng here, and today I am bringing you my top 4 set against Philip Codio from last weekend's Brooklyn Premier Challenge. If you have not seen the top 8 set against James Beck, which was uploaded yesterday, as well as all the Swiss rounds, check them out, they are in a playlist in the description below. Anyway, after beating James 2-0 in the quarterfinals, I moved on to the semis against Philip, who actually has been around for a long time. We played in the semifinals of US Nationals all the way back in 2011, and we also faced off in round 5 of Massachusetts Regionals in 2013, when we were both 4-0. So it was really cool to face against Philip after all these years. I know he hasn't been playing as much in recent years. Uh, he actually qualified and competed at Worlds in 2011, where he finished 9th and senior, so also a world caliber player, and it was nice to see him around again. So his team was Kangaskhan, Crobat, Mawile, Groudon, Giratina, Origin Form, and Cresselia. My team, of course, was Landorus, Primal Groudon, um, Palkia, Kangaskhan, Amoongus, and Cresselia. So the matchup was already pretty scary since we both had Kangaskhan, Groudon, and Cresselia, but he opted for a speedier kind of variant with Crobat and Giratina for potential Tailwind users and a third, second Mega in Mawile, whereas obviously I have the slower Pokemon with Palkia and Amoongus. So a uh, bunch of things I wanted to figure out going into this matchup. One, the moveset of Giratina O, since I wasn't sure. I figured it'd be something like Gear, uh, Shadow Force and will o would protect, but uh, really wanted to know. It's one of the bulkier Pokemon, and I knew that'd be difficult to take care of. Also wanted to figure out his Cresselia and his Groudon moves and how fast the Groudon was, i.e. whether he outsped me or whether we were both min speed. Going into game 1, I figured I wanted to go full offense. I didn't want to bring Amoongus or Cresselia because I still could set up Trick Room with Palkia. Amoongus, I figured, was just not a very good Pokemon in this matchup, so I neglected to bring it. I figured Cresselia I could definitely see myself bringing in future rounds, but I'd rather not bring it game 1 and just play accordingly from there. So I decide Landers and Groudon's a pretty nice lead because I get the Intimidate off and Landers immediately pressures him with Earth Power and Eruption. Uh, you know, obviously I don't know what kind of Groudon he's running at this point, so that's also important information for me to know, but I know my Groudon bulky enough to survive an earth power and after intimidate precipice blades obviously isn't doing as much why while i can ko him in return if he's not bulky so i feel like that's a decent matchup and kangaskhan and palky in the end just to really seal things up so without further ado let's get started this is of course a best of three so you'll be seeing two to three games depending on the outcome and this uh, is for a spot in the finals of the premier challenge as always, if you enjoyed these videos, please share your support by leaving a like on the video, I'd really appreciate it. Anyway, I lead with my Landris and my Groudon, as he leads with his Giratina and his Crobat. So, not a bad lead matchup here, but also not the best. It really comes down to what Giratina has in terms of its moveset. Turn 1, I'm expecting him to maybe go for a Will-O-Wisp, Tailwind, Shadow Force, you know, any combination of those, but I'm not entirely sure. I realized that if he does carry will o -Wisp, I'm actually kind of in some trouble. One play I could have made was actually switching my Landris out into Palkia, and in retrospect, I think that maybe would have been a little bit better, or even going for a U-turn just to get some chip damage. He does go for the Super Fang immediately with this Crobat, not going for a Taunt or a Tailwind. Super Fang makes the most sense there. I end up actually just going for a Rock Slide because my priority right now was to knock out the Crobat just because it's a little bit annoying and it can really support you well. I do actually get a flinch onto the Giratina, which is pretty fortunate. Not sure what he was going for there, but... You know, I'm obviously not going to complain. Either way, though, I realized that the lead matchup honestly wasn't too great because Crobat, you know, doesn't get affected by Intimidate, but... The Giratina getting intimidated is honestly pretty nice because it does reduce Shadow Force's damage output. To replace the Crobat, he brings in his Primal Groudon, which is obviously a major threat, especially given that I don't know what kind of attacks he's carrying. So this next turn, I expect him to predict my Groudon to protect, and I expect him to go for something like a Shadow Force and an Eruption. And so I figure Palkia is the best switch in here possible, and since I'm predicting him to use a Fire-type attack, I actually just Earth Power into the Groudon slot. He ends up going for the Protect, which I'm fine with, but like I mentioned, I don't know how fast the Groudon is either, and he goes for the Tailwind, and that basically ensures that his Groudon's gonna outspeed mine, so now I know if I set up Trick Room, I can probably just win this game, as I Earth Power into the Protect, and Tailwind goes up. This next turn, there's no reason to not make this play, I end up just protecting my Groudon and going for the Trick Room. He goes for the Shadow Force with Giratina, which is his best move, since, you know, you can't. there's no reason to really Tailwind or Protect, especially when you outspeed and you can avoid the Spatial Ren from Palkia, potentially. He does reveal the Precipice Blades here as well as he goes for it, and it does over 50% to Palkia, even with all my bulks. That's really scary. But, I am able to successfully set up Trick Room, which is huge, because now, given that his Groudon is slower than mine under Trick Room, I can just Earth Power him. And I also know that because the Giratina is intimidated, he shouldn't be able to knock me out with Shadow Force on either of my Pokemon here, since he is at minus one and I'm pretty bulky. Giratina goes for the Shadow Force here as his Groudon protects and I double up into it, and I hang on with one HP. 
So this next turn I make a pretty bad play. I end up Earth Powering Groudon, which is obviously the right play to make, but I should have just doubled up into it with Spatial Ren because Groudon protected the last turn. So if he stayed in, then Earth Power just knocks him out and Spatial Ren either targets the slot uh, of Giratina or if he switches out, I just pick up a free knockout. So there was no reason not to Spatial Ren Kangaskhan there unless I was assuming he was going to go for a double protect, but it's a highly unlikely play and that was just kind of a missed opportunity to capitalize off of. So I was pretty frustrated with myself because I realized right after I selected my moves that there was a better play that term, but I still feel like the ball is in my park. So he goes for the fake out onto Palkia, and Tailwind has, or Trick Room, yeah, it's still up, but Tailwind has expired. Uh, and I know that's fine because I can actually just go for an attack with both my Groudon and my Palkia. The thing is, if he fakes out my Groudon, I don't want to protect Palkia and have it rendered useless. I still want to be able to get damage off, so I'm fine with him picking up a knockout onto one of my two Pokemon as he goes for the Shadow Force here with Giratina once again. So the Intimidate earlier was really able to help, and you saw that Palkia was able to hang on with one HP. Now I know that I have one last turn of Trick Room, and I figure to myself, okay, how can I ensure that I win this game? So what I do here is I actually bring in Landorus to get the Intimidate off, and I know that I should be able to still outspeed him with Earth Power, or um, given that Trick Room is still up. So what I do is I bring in Landorus, and I just go straight for the Earth Power with my Groudon, and he ends up not protecting, and I end up just picking up the Knockout. The reason why this play works out really nicely is because if he protects with Groudon, then I bring in Kangaskhan, and the following turn I can just fake out Earth Power, and he has no way to stop that unless he gets a double protect off. So I was really happy that that worked out. He goes for the Shadow Force on the Groudon, but he's at minus two attack right now. So Trick Room expires, and he forfeits, and I win game one pretty decisively 3-1. You know, I still didn't figure out how fast his Groudon was though, which was kind of the biggest issue. I, you know, one reason why it made sense for him to attack there at the end is, you know, maybe he was min speed Groudon as well, and if he won the speed tie, he actually could have just knocked me out there. So I realized that, and that was a pretty, pretty scary thing to consider. And, you know, I was definitely happy that game one worked out perfectly for me, but I knew I had to still play pretty smart going into games two and potentially games three. So, you know, in terms of adjustments I wanted to make after the first game, I. You know, gave it some thought. I figured, like, Pokemon-wise, things worked out pretty nicely. But then I also thought, like, Giratina was a major threat on his team, and that my Kangaskhan really wasn't well-equipped enough to deal with it. But Kangaskhan's obviously nice for the fake-out pet pressure, and for just damage with stuff like Double Edge. But at the same time, Giratina itself is just a major wall to it. You know, you can take all the attacks, you barely take any damage from it because Double Edge uh, doesn't even affect it, nor those low kicks. So I figured that maybe it would make sense to actually bring my Cresselia just for another uh, way to set up Trick Room, since Trick Room was quite helpful in the last game there. Uh, of course, my biggest concern, I still haven't seen his Cresselia or Groudon fully, so I don't know exactly what he's containing or carrying, but I figure I'm going to make the adjustment by at least bringing Cresselia this next game and getting rid of Kangaskhan. Even if it doesn't work out, you know, it'll give me a good sense of what I should bring going into a game three. And sometimes I like to make the adjustments when it doesn't feel like, you know, there are four Pokemon I need to bring in the matchup. For example, against James yesterday, those four Pokemon that I brought felt right, and it was like, okay, I definitely should use these four since the other two don't help me at all, whereas Cresselia made a lot of sense to me in this, and Kangaskhan wasn't doing that much anyway. So, without further ado, let's get started with game two. Of course, being a best of three set, a win here would allow me to win the set and move on to the finals, but a loss would force a game three, so, you know, you always have to play smart even if you are up 1-0. So I switch things up a little bit this time as I lead with my Cresselia and my Groudon as he leads with Kangaskhan and Giratina, which is honestly probably one of the worst matchups I could have went up against. Just because of the fact that one, he gets fake out pressure immediately with Kangaskhan and even if I set up Trick Room, he can, you know, uh, avoid that or waste the turns by switching out into his own Pokemon like Cresselia or Groudon. So I figured out, you know, right from the start, this is probably not the best lead matchup. It would have been really nice to have Landorus out here to get the Intimidates, but unfortunately that's not the case here. So this first turn I end up not protecting with my Groudon because I figure, okay, if you fake out Cresselia to stop the Trick Room, then I'll just get an Eruption off and basically knock your Kangaskhan out. However, he's smart enough to realize that Groudon's the bigger threat, so he goes for the fake out onto Groudon, and he does go for a Shadow Force there with Giratina. So I know I'm able to set up Trick Room, but it's going to be a lot harder to fully take advantage of. So Cresselia successfully sets up Trick Room. Which is pretty good, but Giratina hasn't been intimidated yet, so his Shadow Force is going to be doing a lot. And in fear of that, I actually switch out into my Landorus to get at least one Intimidate off against Giratina, because the nice thing is it does Intimidate even when you use Shadow Force and you're hidden. 
So that works out nicely. Another play I could have made was actually going for the Helping Hand Flamethrower play to knock out Kangaskhan, but he actually ended up switching out into Cresselia, which was a nice move on his end. So I do go for the Sun Boosted Flamethrower onto Cresselia, but you see how bulky Cresselia is. Takes it with over 50%, but I do get a burn, which is pretty fortunate. His Giratina here also goes for the Shadow Force onto my Groudon, which brings me just over 50%. Cresselia now is burned, but this next turn is what completely catches me off guard, and he makes an excellent play. He withdraws the Giratina out into his own Groudon, and at first I'm okay with this, because I figure, okay, I should just be able to outspeed him and knock him out, right, with my Groudon. But, as you'll see, that that doesn't really work out as well as I really would have hoped for. And Landorus, at this point, you know, like I mentioned in Game 1, I didn't bring Landorus for damage output. I brought it for the Intimidates. And he goes for the skill swap with this Cresselia onto his Groudon. So, not only does he outspeed me under Trick Room, he also manages to get the skill swap off. So now, I figure, wow, his Groudon is probably min speed as well. And now I can't touch him with my ground type attacks, which is kind of a big deal. So I do double up into the Cresselia slot. The U-turn actually wasn't necessary. I could have targeted down Groudon with it. So in retrospect, that probably would have been a better play. So I do get the knockout onto Cresselia, but he gets a huge, you know, turning point into this game by getting the skill swap levitate onto the Groudon. And now he's going to bring in his Kangaskhan, so he gets yet another turn of fake out pressure. Once again, I don't want to just fake out and, you know, uh, protect with my Groudon. And this time it does work out nicely since he does predict the fake out and go for a target onto Cresselia. Cresselia flinches, and here is when I figure out, wow, he literally is mid-speed, so we speed high. <laughs> that, that's kind of scary, as he goes for the eruption and that does a ton of damage to both of my Pokemon. And one of the downsides of running Flamethrower is that you don't pick up knockouts, whereas something like Overheat would have picked up a knockout there onto the Kangaskhan, and now Kangaskhan can go for Sucker Punch as well. So at this point, I've basically admitted defeat. I figure he can just go for something like a Sucker Punch Eruption or a Sucker Punch Precipice Blades, but I'm still going to try whatever I can to, you know, have a shot at winning this one since I still have all my Pokemon. So I would draw out into my Pokemon. Palkia, he actually withdraws out into his Giratina, not a move I was anticipating. He does unfortunately win the speed high once again and gets an eruption off. Not like it mattered too much since the only thing I could have done was gotten a flamethrower off against Giratina, but you know, that would have been nice since it's better than nothing. However, he's been playing this really well and like I mentioned, it's just really annoying not being able to touch the uh, the Groudon slot right now. So I bring in Landers once again for Intimidate against the Precipice Blades from Groudon and the Shadow Force from Giratina's end. But at this point, you know, I'm really fearing the Tailwind play. I think one thing, I thought one thing he could have done was gone for the Protect and Tailwind and then kind of go from there. So in fear of that, I actually go for the Rock Slide, uh, just kind of hoping for flinches since Landers isn't going to do very much at this point. He, however, goes for the Will-O-Wisp, which was an excellent play as it is going to target down my Landers and significantly neuter my damage output. I mean, you already saw how little it was doing. And I do go for the Trick Room, which is a mistake because now Groudon's actually the fastest Pokemon on the field. So instead, I should have just let him set up Trick Room. I should have just gone for the Spatial Ren onto Garatina. Even if he sets up Trick Room, uh, or Tailwind, then I can just set up my own Trick Room. So he does withdraw his Groudon, which is kind of weird. I was kind of surprised by that, but I figured he wanted to conserve it for uh, the late game and to reset the sun, especially if I had a water type attack on Palkia. So it made sense to me. Uh, I do end up switching my Landers out into Cresselia to get a potential Intimidate off, and this was a major error I made. I went for the Protect with Palkia, but I really should have just Spatial Rendered there onto the uh, Groudon slot since he did Protect last turn, and I needed to start getting damage output off. So... I would draw Cresselia back out into Landers to get an Intimidate once again against the physical type attackers. Of course, now I can Earth Power into Legradon slot, but at the same time, I still have to pick up a Knockout here. And I also make a Blunder here by going for a Double Protect by accident. It actually ends up being the optimal play if I'm predicting the Fake Out from Kangaskhan, so doesn't be, it's not too bad, but I was actually running out of time and I completely just forgot I had protected the last turn, which was a pretty bad mistake. So, I know the game's still not over, but now it's really difficult because Palkia is my only main means of offense. So, I do switch out Landers once again just to shuffle in the Intimidate for another time against the, um, the Giratina, as I do go for the Spatial Ren here onto the Kangaskhan slot. He doesn't switch out, so I do know that I at least will be able to pick up the Knockout, but now I realize I'm probably relying on a Flinch at this point, or for me to hang on from a combination of Shadow Force and Earth Power, which I know is doable since I've intimidated Giratina multiple times at this point. He does go for the Shadow Force on the Cresselia, which I was okay with because I wanted Cresselia to faint, so I'd get the switch in back into Landers. Though, actually, in retrospect, if Cresselia didn't faint there, I could have gone for a Helping Hand Earth Power play, which would have been pretty nice because I I actually should just knock out Groudon. So it is a 2 on 2 at this point. Obviously Palkia does decently against both of these two Pokemon, but Landorus isn't doing anything. So effectively it's a 1 on 2 with the potential to flinch with Rock Slide. So I realize now if I can get a flinch or two with Rock Slide, I can probably win the game. If not, I probably lose. So he protects with Groudon here, which is actually a weird decision because uh, he was trying to style out my Trick Room as I did set it up, but 
Because Groudon was actually the slowest Pokemon, so it would have been the fastest Pokemon in Trick Room, and he could have just erupted there and outright won the game without having to deal with potential flinch chances. But he ends up stalling out my own Trick Room, and now I actually have an advantage here. I can go for the rocks, I can go for a flinch. Now, I unfortunately already missed the Giratina, so I know that's guaranteed an attack off. But if I flinch Groudon, then that will put things back into my favor because I will Earth Power here, and then the following turn I can Spatial Rend into the Palkia slot and then just Earthquake. Uh, and that's a guaranteed play because, you know, he can't avoid the Spatial Rend. However, no flinch onto the ground on here. Earth Power doesn't pick up the knockout, and he gets the Earth Power off against my Palkia to bring me down to 44 HP. So I figure I can still maybe win this one if I survive this uh, Shadow Force. So I end up just going for a Rock Slide. I realize at this point I do need some RNG to win the game because his ground on should be able to knock my landers out so if i can survive the shadow force get the spatial rend off maybe go for a crit knock it out then i can win the game but he unfortunately not even with the intimidate shadow force's damage output is huge picks up the knockout there he went for the safe double target play onto the palkia slot but the game is over right now since landers can't do anything so that's one of the reasons why shadow force is a really nice move and why giratina o is pretty cool uh you can kind of walk your way around the protects and protect being such a common move in vgc is you know uh, it's really nice that shadow force can just mitigate that and attack through so that was the biggest issue because especially in late game situations like that where it's two on two it comes down to a lot of mind games on who's protecting who's not but shadow force you don't have to worry about it however i do know that i can also use shadow force to my advantage for example when he uses it i know that i can freely target the slot with the spatial ren in the future should he continue to use it so if there's any point where his Giratina is faster than mine, he goes for this uh, Shadow Force, then he'll get an attack off, but I can intimidate him by switching out into Landers, and I'll be able to uh, get a Spatial Rend off against it. So I know I have to play a bit more smartly against Giratina going into this next game, and one major reason why I was caught off guard in this game was because he was able to get the skill swap onto his uh, Groudon. So Pokemon-wise, I figure I'm fine with the same four Pokemon, but I definitely want to change my lead matchup a little bit. Leading with Groudon, not the best of ideas. So I actually decided to lead with Landers and Cresselia, Pretty common lead from 2015, but uh, the Landers here allows me to get the Intimidate off against any combination of Kangaskhan or Giratina. Cresselia allows me to set up Trick Room, and then I could potentially set up Trick Room and Skill Swap onto my own Groudon. And if he leads with something like Cresselia and his own Groudon, I can, you know, switch into Palkia and, and Intimidate him with Landers and whatnot. So I think the lead adjustment here was really the biggest change I had to make. Kangaskhan still doesn't help me out that much, nor does Amoongus, and once again, didn't really want to bring Kangaskhan. So same four Pokemon, different lead matchup. So we are finally jumping into game three of course vgc and best of three is really about momentum and it's always scary when you win game one and lose game two because now your opponents actually got in the advantage given that they just beat you so you really have to be smart about it however i'm really really happy when i see that philip leads with his garatina and his crobat because what this will allow me to do is actually switch directly out into my ground since a super fang onto the lander slot is highly unlikely and I can go straight for the Trick Room here because I have Mentor Orb. So not only do I su successfully set up Trick Room and get my Groudon out, but I also get the Intimidate onto his uh, Giratina. So uh, that's like three major points that like, completely changes the matchup despite us using the same Pokemon. I was also kind of just surprised to see Crobat since it didn't do very much in Game 1 and he didn't need it Game 2. And maybe he was anticipating Cresselia coming out with the Trick Room, but I do have the Mentor Orb here. So Cresselia isn't affected by that, and he also goes for Will-O-Wisp, which was the prediction I was making since Landorus didn't do very much in game one other than get the flinch and I wanted to at least conserve Landorus for a late game earthquake or explosion. So now that I have the Trick Room up, I know I can actually just go for the Skill Swap Eruption play. Uh, nothing on his team can switch into an Eruption. Even Primal Groudon takes like 30 to 40% from it. And I know Giratina will take some damage out as well. So he actually stays in with Crobat and I'm 100% okay with that. I also go for the Skill Swap this time to put the advantage into my favor because last game I had trouble since he was the one who got Skill Swap off first. And I said, nope, that's not going to be the case anymore. I'm not going to allow you to do that. His Giratina also Shadow Forces, which is really good news for me here. The reason why it's good news is because it means that he can't just switch in Cresselia and switch Giratina out and skill swap into it. It means that he's forced to attack with Giratina this turn and, you know, Groudon here is most likely going to protect, but Giratina's attacks are not doing anything at this point, so it's really about Giratina's partner that I'm watching out for, and I can continuously hamper it down with attacks. So I go for the safest play this turn by switching out into my Landers to get another Intimidate off, since Cresselia has already done his job by going for the Trick Room and getting the Levitate onto my own Groudon. I figure he's probably going to protect with this Groudon, there's no reason not to, but there's no better play I can make with my Groudon right now. I could, you know, 
just waste eruption pp i guess but otherwise i'm just gonna earth power to cover all my bases his giratina here does launch a shadow force and is smart enough to target down groudon but that does literally 43 damage and he needs another four in order to knock my groudon out so five hit ko after all these intimidates so this next play he makes a or this next turn he makes a good play by withdrawing out into his Cresselia, but I figured this is finally the perfect opportunity for me to bring in Palkia, because now Palkia and Groudon are out at the same time, and I can just eruption and spatial ren, and there's nothing my opponent can really do about it. Of course, Cresselia is able to avoid the earth power due to its levitate. But because he keeps on going for the Shadow Force with his Giratina, he can't just successfully set in his Groudon and go for a skill swap. So he's going to get an Ice Beam off, probably baiting a Freeze at this point, as I'm just going to go for an Eruption and a Spatial Ren to get as much damage off as possible. However, the fact that Giratina is currently under the Spatial Ren, and the fact that he will attack first since Trick Cream is expiring, means that I will be able to just Spatial Ren that slot for a knockout. And once I get that knockout, that's basically game. And Trick Room has expired already, so he goes for the Shadow Force here onto Groudon. Uh, or Trick Room just expired. So this next turn, you know, uh, Trick Room obviously is now over. And I'm not going to set up Trick Room again because I want to be slower than Giratina. Uh, it's a major selling point there because now I know all I have to do is wait for him to go for another Shadow Force and I'll just Spatial Ren for the win. So I was really surprised to see him not go out into Groudon and Skill Swap at any point, but I figured he probably thought he was too far behind. And now I know as long as Spatial Ren connects with Giratina, I should win the game regardless of what Giratina goes for. My opponent does make a smart play of going for the Helping Hand Shadow Force, but Dutesley intimidates, Groudon hangs on with 10 HP, so throughout this series, you've seen how well the bulk of my Pokemon have helped me out in terms of these matchups. They're really just hanging on from all these super powerful attacks and Helping Hand boosted attacks. And so I get the Spatial Rend off there against Giratina, picking up the Knockout. Groudon gets the Flamethrower off here, also going to pick up the Knockout there onto Cress. So 4-1 in my favor now would be kind of hard to lose when I have all these Pokemon and he really doesn't have any answers left. So feeling excellent about how I've played and really Game 3 couldn't have played out any better. I mean, made one major lead adjustment, the Landris and Cresselia, uh, was able to read the Will-O-Wisp, was able to set up Trick Room successfully, uh, was able to knock out Giratina with relative ease and, you know, decrease the, the damage output from Shadow Force, and now I know the game's over. He's going to go for a press of his blades there, maybe hoping for a crit onto Palkia, but obviously it's not going to matter. Uh, he actually does get the crit there onto Palkia, but Groudon's Earth Power here is enough to knock out his Groudon and win Game 3. 4 and 0. Oh. So, uh, really scary game 2 there because he just outplayed me and did a very good job, but I was able to make some small adjustments. Uh, the lead matchup was huge. Uh, he bringing Crobat was also kind of a big deal because it didn't do very much for him. So, I end up winning this best of three against Philip 2 1, and I do advance to the finals. So, I was one of two people out of the 61 players at the tournament at the finals. My finals opponent was actually John Hu, who you will be seeing in the future videos. So, for top 8 and top 4, what I did was I combined all three battle videos because these go by pretty quickly, but uh, the finals was streamed at twitch.tv slash libertygarden, by the way, if you don't follow them, give them a follow. And because it was streamed, John and I were able to download the archive, and John was actually in the New York City area for a while. Uh, he doesn't live around here, but he was just visiting, so uh, as a result, we decided to actually co-commentate the finals live. So you guys will be getting a really cool set of videos in the upcoming days, and it will give you a pretty nice insight into two different players and what they're thinking in a best of three so uh, those are separated because each one is a little bit longer I don't want to just drop like a 45 50 minute video on you guys I hope you don't mind that but uh, stay tuned for the finals between me and John who and the co-commentary collaboration anyway I really hope you guys enjoyed this best of three commentary please show your support by leaving a like if you did and leave me any feedback or suggestions for what you want to see and get hype for the finals matchup anyway that's it for this video guys leave a like like always if you enjoyed it and i'll see you guys next time all right peace